Hello guys, my name is Vijay Kumar Vaka. I am working as Senior Solution Consultant in Episero. In this session, let us discuss about circuit breaker in AnyPoint MQ. So previously I have created two videos on AnyPoint MQ. You can check this playlist in my channel, Integration World. And I'll be uh, going through this article which uh, I have created myself today. So, so that uh, we can go through this uh, concept okay yes so uh, in order to work on the work with the any point mq right uh, you cannot work with the trial account and that is only possible with the enterprise account as mentioned uh, here right now what are the prerequisites so you need to know about q acknowledgement no acknowledgement subscriber and how to create a client app and how to configure any point mq configuration in any point studio because this i'm not going to show you now i have already explained how to uh, create the configuration how to create a client app and uh, i have discussed about these things in this video so you can also check this uh, article and uh, let's go ahead so in, in this uh, video, I'm not going to discuss about these concepts, but I'll be discussing about this uh, concept itself. Okay. Now, uh, what is the advantage uh, you are going to get with the circuit breaker or, or how it works is, um, this is uh, where you can see the definition, right? That the circuit breaker allows the systems to stop making requests and allows the external service to recover. So for example, let's take this uh, use case, uh, which I have created in the AnyPoint Studio. Let us discuss about this example in AnyPoint Studio. So this is the subscriber, and uh, I have subscribed to uh, the queue name called uh, demo-q. And here you have to observe the acknowledgement mode, that is manual, okay? and so if it is a manual mode, right, uh, we'll be getting the acknowledgement token. So that I, that I have captured in this variable, that is VASK token. Now here, I'm just printing the payload, whatever I'm fetching from, whatever this subscriber is picking from the queue. And here, I'm trying to uh, send it as a post uh, request to the external service. So here, because we cannot uh, work with the external service right so what i have done i have created one more application and this i have deployed in the trial account and uh, that is what i am considering as an external service here okay so this is the domain and this is the path uh, of this uh, uh, dummy external service okay so i have deployed this particular test application in uh, yeah this is the trial account and you could see here I have uh, deployed this and we are going to make a call uh, from by using this HTTP request to the app just I just have shown you now okay now here you see I'm just printing the response from it if you see here uh, I have just configured a sample uh, response where uh, I mean, you could see here, right? Status as success, that's it. So this is what uh, we'll get as a response once you uh, request uh, this particular application successfully, right? So that is what I'm printing, just to understand that uh, we got a successful uh, response from the external service. And here I'm sending the acknowledgement token by using the ACK operation. So then what happens, this, uh, I mean, this means that we are sending the acknowledgement token to the queue saying what to remove the message from the queue because we are done with its purpose right so in happy path we'll be sending sek and if there are any errors then we'll be sending nsek so nsek is nothing but no acknowledgement so now when we send nsek to the queue right so we are asking the queue to not to delete the message uh, from the queue okay so this is the difference uh, between 
NAC and AC. Uh, this is how the flow is. Okay. I'm just simply posting the message. Nothing uh, I'm doing uh, here apart from that. So again, let's go through the article. Now I have explained all these things uh, using screenshots here. So if you want to replicate the same um, application, you can go through these uh, uh, snaps uh, so that it will be easy for you. Okay, I have explained this. Just uh, focus on this note so that, so that you will understand what uh, I'm considering as an external service. So here we are not actually sending a, a request to any real time external service, but this is some external service which we have created ourselves to test this uh, concept. Okay. Yeah, so this is the dummy application which yeah, I have deployed to a trial account. And uh, yeah, we are good with the flow understanding, right? Now, if I talk about two scenarios, one is the happy part, the other is what if the external service is down? So if it is happy path, right, what happens, whatever we pick up from this, uh, from the queue using the subscriber, it will be sent as a request to this uh, application and it will give a success response to us. And uh, this application will send an SEK to the queue then the message will be deleted from the queue. Okay, so this is the happy path. So that is what I have explained here. And uh, yeah, you could see the logs here, right? So I'm sending this message, mess message colon hello world, and we are getting status colon success as a response from the external service. Okay, so this is the happy path, right? Now let's talk about the a scenario where the external service is down. So external service is down in the sense I made uh, that application down manually and I have tested the same scenario how uh, it behaves. So at that time we were getting HTTP timeout errors. Okay. So now whenever we get that any error right as per this configuration any error what happens we are sending NSAK so that the message is not deleted from the queue. Now again, that will be picked up by this uh, flow, right? And it goes on, right? That is, that is what happens because every time you are sending the request, every time it is failing, every time you are sending NAC and uh, it goes on, right? So this is something uh, that is not suggestible, right? So, and one more thing, what happens if I show you this uh, particular image, it will always be in the in-flight mode. Okay, so there, there is a difference between in-queue and in-flight mode. Um, if, if the message is in in-flight mode, right, then what happens? No other consumer apart from this particular uh, application or this particular subscriber can fetch that uh, I mean can can pick up the message okay so if it is one right here so that means only this particular subscriber is holding that application always so because of this nature every time uh, we are sending NAC every time it is staying in uh, in-flight mode only right so that is one drawback right because this application is not processing the message and also we are not letting uh, we are not releasing the message into the queue so that someone else can pick up right so so here because I'm talking uh, in a, a scenario where we have one message what if if we have 30 messages or 40 messages in the in-flight mode then you are holding all the 40 messages or 50 messages uh, in the in-flight mode, right? And and your application is not able to process uh, them because the external service is down. So this is not a right practice uh, in the real time, right? So, so and all these messages are staying in in-flight mode and they are continuously 
going through uh, your process i mean they are continuously being given to this process and every time they are failing right so this is not a uh, good practice first of all all of them are failing and they are uh, going in a loop till till the external service will be up and running they'll be in, in the loop if you don't configure the circuit breaker right so and also you are not letting others to consume the messages so this is the drawback of uh, uh, i mean without using circuit breaker so when you use the circuit breaker so let me show you the circuit breaker configuration so if you click on create and uh, search for circuit breaker you'll get this configuration and uh, and and you have to configure the error types right so you can configure any number of uh, error types here uh, for the for the time being with whatever i have done with the uh, application which i have deployed to the trial account i have undeployed it right so i'm getting http timeout error only so for the time being i have configured uh, http timeout error only here and also error threshold i have configured it as 5 and trip timeout as 10 and i have changed it from milliseconds to minutes right in real time at least it will be like 30 minutes or one hour right so now let me show you how i have configured this is http timeout error you can also configure other errors by uh, putting a comma here okay and what about this errors threshold so the circuit breaker will come into the picture when the subscriber finds uh, http timeout errors and that too for five times okay so once uh, the sub i mean once this application or the or the subscriber finds http timeout issue is coming for the for five times then what it will do um, it will not pick up any further messages from the queue and whatever uh, it is holding already in the in memory right it will uh, it will let it will give it to this particular process so they anyway have to error out but only thing it will do is that it will not pick up any message any new messages from the queue so that is one thing and that too for how, how much time that too for uh, for 10 minutes of time okay it will not pick up any further messages and whatever are there in the in memory uh, right or in flight they will be processed though we know that uh, it will result into an error still uh, we have to release those messages right whatever we have uh, uh, whatever we are holding in the in memory or uh, in flight mode so they have to go for the processing and they'll result into an error and they'll be moved back to the in queue state okay so so yeah after 10 minutes it will not uh, fetch any i mean till this uh, trip timeout ex exhaust okay it will not pick up any further messages now let's say that uh, whatever are there in the in-flight mode it, it has kept all the messages in the in queue and uh, Let's say we are we are done with the 10 minutes or trip timeout. Now what it will do? It will pick up one message uh, from the in queue, and uh, it will see, it will check if it is able to send the request to the external service without any issues. Okay. So at this moment, if if uh, it sees a successful acknowledgement or if it sees or understands the external service is up and running then what it will do the circuit uh, breaker uh, now what do you say it will go into a deactivate uh, deactivate state and uh, it will start this subscriber will start picking up the messages as usually okay so this is how it works and this is really uh, important when you work with the any point mq so i have all i have uh, uh, provided better description in this article so you can check uh, uh, i mean i started writing 
these uh, stories uh, from yesterday itself you, so you can check in this link in in medium okay so i hope you understood something out of this so please focus on this this is a real a good feature uh, that we are getting from any point mq and in real time this is uh, uh, really needed actually okay you, you'll get a lot of benefit uh, from this uh, um, concept okay so and for for any further information uh, related to any point mq right you can check the mulesoft documentation so i, I haven't discussed about the subscribe type max local messages but you can check uh, on the on any other new options that i missed or i did not uh, speak uh, you can check in the mulesoft documentation so if if my explanation if if, if i have gone on very quickly with my explanation so just uh, go through this uh, article i have explained in a step by step manner and uh, yeah that's it from my side uh, for today and thank you so much for listening to my video